Hello, welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is design controls. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and look at the introduction. It has some important information that you need to know. Finally, you can check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we cover today. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda which consists of four items. You can see those in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video to get the bonus three questions. Our topic today, design controls, comes from 820.30 and ISO 1345 section 7.3 and 7.3.1. It's important to note that in 820, the FDA uses terminology around design controls, while 1345 uses design and development. These terms, they're interchangeable. Design controls in five words. Control design, produce safe products. Design controls are intended to control the design process so that we produce a safe and effective medical device. In order to do that, we have to have a procedure that defines the design process that we will follow. The procedure must cover the 10 requirements that are outlined in both 820 and 1345. Those requirements are the general requirements, design planning, design inputs, design outputs, design review, design verification, design validation, design transfer, design changes, and design history file. There are two additional areas that we have to discuss and take into consideration when we're talking about design controls. Those are risk management and software validation. I will make a separate video where we go through each one of these 12 different areas and review them in the executive series format. So how do I know this is working? Well first, after a new product launch, within the first two years, we have no recalls. Second, our adverse event and our complaint data is in line with the expected occurrences that we captured in our risk management files. And then finally, when our design history file is audited, there are no major non-conformances. How do I know it's not working? Well, first, our complaint rates, our adverse events, they're higher than what we estimated in our risk management documents. Second, we have recalls within the first two years of product launch related to the design and safety of our medical device. And then finally, during audits of our design history file, we get major nonconformances, critical major nonconformances that are found. Now, for those three bonus questions. The first, how many new products have we launched into the market in the last three years? Second, of those new products that we've launched, how many recalls have we had for those products? What was the reason and why did we do the field action? And then finally, have there been any DHF audits that have found major or critical nonconformances? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.